My name is Dana Lovell. I am 22 years old and I'm in my fifth year at Brigham Young University in Utah in the United States. I just finished my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree last semester and will be spending my last year of school getting my license to teach art education and I'll also be finishing up my minor in Global Women's Studies. While I was growing up, I bounced around a lot of different states, including California, New Jersey, Utah, and Oregon, but my family ended up in rural Pennsylvania, really close to Amish country, when I was about 10 years old, and then I stayed there until I left for college in 2019. A lot of the artwork I create is related to feminism and the inner child, as well as ableism, because I do have a circulatory disease, as well as severe ADHD, and then a few other health problems as well. And these have really impacted the way I see the world, as well as the activist art that I create. I also grew up in a very religious household, so both my religious beliefs and my religious trauma show up in my art, as well as the kind of work I create. Moving around a lot helped me learn to have an open mind at a young age because I was moving between really conservative and really liberal areas and really pro-religion, anti-religion areas. And going back and forth between those different places really helped me meet all different kinds of people and just learn a lot about my country and the different views people have and how to have empathy, which is just really important for artists, especially in terms of learning different things about the world and then creating your own opinions and own views based on not just a super limited perspective. Living in so many different areas led to a lot of different levels of our education during my childhood. Some of the areas that we lived in had more money and some had less and this especially showed up in the different schools that I went to and up until I was about 11 years old and my family moved to Pennsylvania, I didn't have art classes at all in school. And I definitely had private lessons from different sources in my life. So whether that be in the community or from my family, um, I was getting some exposure to art. And my grandma is an artist, so whenever she came from out of state to visit my family, she would always give me a drawing lesson, which was really sweet. And I also grew up in a household that didn't have a ton of money, so that helped me learn to embrace making art whenever I had the opportunity and with whatever materials were available to me. To this day, I still really love mixed media art, and I kind of wonder if that is a factor of one of the reasons why I'm drawn to it. Um, it's sustainability and just versatility. And anyway, at this age, um, art was starting to become an outlet for me to express my thoughts and my feelings and my ideas about the world as well as a way for me to discover more about my own identity and what things were important to me. And there was one point in college where I think I was maybe like a sophomore and someone came to me and said, you're not ever confrontational in person, but you're always confrontational in your art, which is something that I never had thought of before. And I eventually realized that art was a way for me to share my voice in a world where when women speak, they aren't always heard and people were always excited to see what I was making, but not always excited to hear what a woman had to say. So I realized that art was my voice in this world where people didn't always want to hear what I had to say. My family and friends at BYU are hugely influential in terms of support, which is so important because who you surround yourself with has the potential to have just a huge impact on your work especially being a part of the BFA program at BYU. I've just loved sharing a studio space with the other BFA students. We can all see each other's work, ask each other for advice, and even just work around each other in silence. And that creative environment is fantastic for inspiration in both what my work looks like, but also in encouraging me to keep going. And it's also nice because professors can come in and out and we can talk to them and ask if things are working or if they're not, which is great. And then if we're feeling stuck or if we're feeling unsure, we can ask our professors or we can ask the people around us who are also working in the studio. And that's just been awesome. And then in terms of um, who my influences are in the art world, I find myself really inspired by Kate Gilmore and the Gorilla Girls. I also really like Portia Munson and the work of feminist performance, performance artists like Yoko Ono, Marina Abramovich, Anna Mendieta, and Janine Antony. So in terms of what I'm working on right now, um, I'm actually mainly focusing on healing from a 
major head injury. So I've been putting a lot of energy towards just healing, taking a little break. But I also recently just got back from studying human rights. Um, I was on a study abroad in Europe, so mostly in London. We were in London for three weeks, and then we also traveled to places like the Netherlands, Belgium, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland, um, and a few other places, and that was absolutely fantastic. And I'm excited to see how that trip will find its way into my art and inspire my art in the future. But overall, for the past couple of years, I've been making and planning a lot of video art pieces as well as a lot of book arts pieces. And I've been learning to make a lot of different book structures, book bindings, and making a lot of work about processing the transition between childhood and adulthood and how that all ties into feminism and my experience as a woman, as well as collecting experiences of other women. Um, those are, I feel like, the main things that I've been um, focusing on. I was also on a study abroad last year in Madrid, Spain, mostly. Um, we also went to some other places in Spain, but that was a study abroad with the art department. So I made a lot of work there um, about those topics as well. Some of the biggest challenges of being an artist are, I think, finding the time and the resources, especially as a college student. Those two things are hard to come by, especially with video art because when I'm doing a performance piece for video, it takes an entire team to make that video piece come together. And like I said, especially as a college student, I don't have funds to hire anyone, but what I do have um, are a lot of connections to other students. And we can kind of just say, I'll help you out with this, if you help me out with this, we can kind of just like exchange like what we know how to do with our major or whatever we can offer in terms of just helping each other out with what every person is working on which might be very different um, and just kind of lend our time to each other with helping with different projects so they help with my projects and I help with theirs and that can be really fun and you can meet other new people that way and um, make connections to new students that can help you with your projects which is great um, but also I feel like one of the hardest parts of being an artist is keeping up momentum after you finish a big piece um, if there's something that I made that I feel really proud of, sometimes afterwards I feel kind of paralyzed and I'm like, how am I ever going to make anything like that again? People really liked that and it can be difficult to keep making work. So finding a balance of not pushing yourself too hard, giving yourself the breaks that you need, but then keeping the energy to keep creating work even when you feel like you're not capable. So if I could give any advice to my younger self, um, which I feel like a lot of my art is very related to this idea, um, actually, I think I would tell my younger self that all of her feelings are valid and that she doesn't need to seek validation from people who don't see her value. And especially that she's way smarter than she thinks she is. And to remember that the first things that we make are always just the start of a, our potential they can't be and won't be perfect the first time. And it's impossible to be good at everything, but when we keep trying, we can always get better. And that's something I need to keep reminding myself now because I'm like, oh, I'm 22, like I should be able to do this. Like, you know, even if it's not my emphasis and it's like, it's okay to not be perfect the first time. No one is gonna be perfect the first time. I feel like the mediums that I lean towards generally surprise people and might feel unconventional to them. Performance art isn't something that a lot of people outside the art world know much about. They think a lot of times about things on stage, like musical theater or performing in that way when you say performance art. And it's the same with my video art. Sometimes my work is documentation of a performance, some, or sometimes they're the opposite and they're like storyboarded and planned ahead of time. But they're not usually what people expect when I tell them that I'm an artist. A lot of times they expect me to be a painter or someone who uses pencils to make graphite drawings. And I wish I did more of that, but it's not really what I gravitate towards when I'm trying to say something through my art. Um, especially because my body is usually a huge part of my performance art and it becomes the medium where I'm writing things on my skin or something like that. And people can find that pretty strange, um, which is understandable. And then I feel like book arts too are one of my most favorite things in the world that I discovered um, probably like a year or two ago in college. And when I say book arts, people don't know what that means. And they are like, oh, do you 
print books or draw in books or make things out of book pages. And sometimes even when people see the books that I make, they're pretty confused. When I make my art, I'm usually listening to music and lately sometimes audiobooks as well. Just easy things to listen to like young adult fiction because I don't have to put any energy into that or thinking about that. I also like to listen to a lot of pop music if I'm working on something that doesn't require planning and thinking. But if there's any math involved or I'm planning out something like a book that requires measuring, um, math is not my strong suit and I'll need to focus really hard on that. So I'll put on instrumental music. I really love the instrumental version of the animated Barbie movies, um, their soundtracks. And then sometimes if I'm really stressed about something or I really need to focus, I'll work in complete silence. But generally it's with music. And then I also tend to either work around other artists that are working or just completely by myself, um, as long as no one is watching me work because then I'm thinking about what they're thinking instead of thinking about my work and it becomes me performing for them instead of me thinking about what I'm making. So some of the best reactions that people have had to my work are, I can think of two, um, I think off the top of my head. There was one time when I was a freshman, I think, in college, and there were a lot of men coming to see this work that I had done about the pressure put on women in society to appear a certain way. And one of the guys came out and said, is this really what it feels like? Is this really what women experience? And that meant a lot to me. And that, that kind of response is always validating because it means a lot to me when my work can help educate someone about someone else's experience and start them on that path of learning more about the experiences of others, especially um, men learning about the experiences of women. And then I also, this is this one is pretty heart-wrenching. Um, I made an art piece about sexual assault after a close friend of mine was assaulted. And it's a video piece called Dear Mary, It's Not Your Fault. And there's a lot of screaming in that video. And I share a lot of my work on TikTok and Instagram because it's more accessible that way. And one girl commented on this specific piece when I had posted it on TikTok and said, thank you for screaming the scream that I couldn't and just thanked me for screaming for her when she hadn't been able to during her horrible experience. And that made me cry. I was so, so touched and like horrified by that, but also really touched by that because I can't change the past, but if I can connect to people and help them feel heard, then that just means so much to me. Overall, I hope that women can feel seen and validated through my work and that everyone, but especially men, can learn more about women's experiences and challenges. And like I said, I do make a lot of work about feminism and then also about the inner child and those two things definitely connect and overlap in my work, but I do make a lot of work about the inner child specifically and that transition between childhood and adulthood and how our childhood can inform our adulthood. And so I hope that my work can spark connections between people and their inner child, as well as help start them on that journey that they can begin if they haven't already of healing and validating that inner child. Thank you so much for featuring me. My art Instagram, if anyone is interested, is Pink Floral Artist, and my art TikTok is the same. So just at and then Pink Floral Artist. And then my email is pinkfloralartist at gmail.com if anyone wants to email me. And my website is pinkfloralartist.wordpress.com. Thank you so much again.